Hey, it's Sean, and we need to be honest, you're just probably not going to agree with this, and that's cool. It's the inevitability of human nature taking its course as one opinion resonates with someone and not the other, thus creating a contradiction. Also, I'm ranking these in terms of not just how big these moments were, but how predictable it was that they would happen. Something like the Legends coming out at WrestleMania 32 was a huge and unexpected shock. However, in the grand scheme of things, it didn't change anything, hence why there aren't too many one-time only things on this list. And things such as maybe Lesnar at Raw 2012 are not on the list simply because Lesnar's return was rumoured for bloody ages before it occurred. Things that were inevitable but not early don't make my cut. Sorry, boys. Honourable mentions, The Rock returning in 2011, mentioned Lesnar in 2012, Ultimate Warrior's passing, and Stone Cold returning on the 4th of January 2000 episode of Raw to help mankind win the WWF Championship. Anyways, I'm Eternal Fight and this is my top 10 most shocking moments in WWE history. Number 10, The Hardy Boys return at WrestleMania 33. Alright, stop. Stop. Okay, you've probably just made the assumption that I'm nothing but a stupid child obsessed with a modern PG WWE product, but I'm not. There's old stuff to come, don't you worry, but you can't deny that this was an electric bolt up the cock for a relatively snoozeworthy mania. I personally got it spoiled for me that my favourite tag team of all time and a childhood hero returned at the biggest sports event of the year, but you know, hey, at least I didn't hear that Reigns beat Taker. Oh boy! Sure, there were rumours, just like there are about everything from MVP returning to the size of Charlotte's jugs. No, but seriously, Charlotte, I'm sorry for the invasion of your privacy. But there wasn't anyone who really, truly expected it. The thunderous reaction, the thought that New Day may have been teasing, and the icing on the cake of Matt grabbing the titles. Sweet mama, they're back in town. Number 9, AJ Styles debut. We're going back further, slowly, slowly. It was previously announced that Styles had been signed, but... January? And at number 3 in the Rumble? The Titantron slowly lifted the blue smoke to reveal the words, I am phenomenal. It was AJ Styles. Well, we didn't see that. Us who watched at home, we, um, we got a whole load of this. Cheers, Kevin. You f***ing c Everyone lost their minds as the king of TNA and New Japan waltzed down the ramp to one of the most over-themed songs of the last five years. People sure as hell didn't want none. They wanted the whole thing. Twice. Despite the cheeky Roman face cam reaction, it was an epic moment. And I do despise that word, but I was straight up not using phenomenal. Number 8, The Pipe Bomb. The greatest promo of all time. I'm sorry Steve Austin, Survivor Series 1996, and The Rock, like ever since the first heel turn, but in my opinion, there just hasn't been a promo that is more talked about, rewatched, or impactful than CM Punk from the 27th of June 2011, which might I add, was my 8th birthday. His words came straight from the heart and resonated with every wrestling fan that was sick of the repetitive, ignorant, and out of touch principles of Vincent Kennedy McMahon and his quote unquote corporate yes men. Punk went on tirades about his frustrations with Vince's hypocrisies and unwillingness to listen to fans, the fact that he's barely promoted, pondering Vince's death and what that entails. He even name dropped Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling. He spoke the truth while staying in character, and within five and a half minutes, Phil Brooks successfully launched himself to superstardom. Literary perfection. Number seven, Foley takes a tumble. This one basically speaks for itself. So Mankind and The Undertaker were set to have a hell on a se- Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. I meant HELL IN A CELL! Match at King of the Ring 1998, and everyone expected it to be the match of the night. It was by far the match of the year. In the first five minutes of the damn match, Foley had already been knocked out cold, suffering a concussion and a dislocated shoulder in a move that nobody or even their non-existent dog or grandma expected. Undertaker genuinely pushed Mrs. Foley's baby boy off a 20 pissing foot structure through an announce table as Jim Ross tore several vocal cords making the best call of his life. Despite this, Foley thought Calling a match off after only dislocating one limb? Doesn't really bait my potato. Sid Lunatic got straight back up and continued the match to get directly planted through the cell, bruising ribs, puncturing lungs, sending as much as three teeth through his nose, breaking his jaw, and after all that he still managed a thumbtack spot. Foley may as well be Superman. Doesn't change the fact that he'll always be my hero. 
Okay, that's, that's not true, my hero's Jeff Hardy, but Foley's still incredible. Number six, the Montreal Screwjob. The story told a thousand times over. What we learnt from the Montreal Screwjob is that one, Vince McMahon will sacrifice anything for the benefit of his business, two, Shawn Michaels is a dick, and three, Vince McMahon is also a dick, if not a bigger one. The single event that spawned the best wrestling villain ever, the Montreal Screwjob shall ever be remembered in infamy. Bret Hart was world champ, but on his way out, he agreed to lose his title to Michaels, but on the stipulation that he only lose it on Raw, and not in his hometown of Montreal, Canada. Vince opted against this, deciding that it'd make for a better moment if Hart lost it on pay-per-view. The finish had Hart tapped to his own move, the sharpshooter, which everyone was aware of, except for Brett himself. The ref was informed to ring the bell regardless of whether Hart tapped or not. Vince knew what he was doing, so did Sean, you know the rest. Brett screwed Brett, I'm tired of this bullshit etc. Number 5, Austin sides with Vince. WrestleMania X7 and it's one of the biggest and one of the best matches of all time. The best rivalry ever coming to what everyone thought was its end, fittingly in the main event of the best WrestleMania event in its entire 33 year history so far. The rivalry advanced from Austin vs Vince to Austin vs Rock and Vince and finally to just the Rattlesnake vs the Great One. Rock was heel and Austin was face going into the match, not that it necessarily mattered, the crowd was so firmly behind both competitors that the winner almost couldn't have carried any weight. Notice me say almost though. When Vince showed up we were sort of expecting the classic Vince screws Austin finish that we've all seen a hundred times over. A few expected perhaps something a bit different for the biggest show of the calendar year, but no one could have ever foreseen the beer guzzling Texan ever sided with the same SOB that had screwed with him all those times over. However, contrary to everyone's expectations, the night ended with a chair beat down on rock from Austin, with a chair supplied by the chair of the board. There were way too many chairs in that sentence. The two men, who shed litres of blood and sweat as a direct result of each other, closed the night with a firm handshake and a beer. What the fuck? Number 4, The Death of Eddie Guerrero. Not only a main eventer, not only in his prime years, but one of the most passionate and beloved men in the history of the wrestling industry, Eddie Guerrero passed away in a hotel room in Minnesota on the 13th of November 2005, aged just 38 due to heart failure. A real life occurrence that affected the on-air product like no other in history, Eddie's departure of life took place on the same month that he was supposed to start feuding and result in a package with Shawn Michaels. We tragically lost what could have been sensational years of work. A lot of people that weren't alive to experience the event, including myself, find it surreal and hard to imagine, but I always envisioned it like this. Imagine that Daniel Bryan was still wrestling today and died of a heart attack tomorrow. That kind of sorrow and sense of loss. Eddie will always be gone, but never forgotten. Number 3, Hogan's heel turn. Okay, so technically this isn't WWE, but, but shut up, okay? Because it was shocking as bollocks, alright? So that dude with that moustache who had been running around in yellow and red had been in WCW for two years by Bash at the Beach 1996, and the main event was the heel team of Scott Hall and Kevin Nash versus Sting, Randy Savage and Lex Luger. Nash and Hall had implied earlier that they had a third member of their team. They were in the middle of destroying the assembly of Sting, Luger and Savage, and Hogan came came out for the assist. However, instead of siding with the faces and helping Savage up off the floor, he dropped several legs on Savage and revealed himself as the third member of National Hall's team. Soon the NWO would form, Hulk would become Hollywood, Yellow and Red would become Grey and Black, and the rest is history. Number 2, the Chris Benoit incident. This isn't something I want or feel as if I need to talk about, but I'll quickly gloss over it. After sustaining several injuries to the head, trauma, depression, taking a lot of pills and witnessing the deaths of close friends and family members in a very short period of time, Christopher Michael Benoit snapped. Sending strange texts to people such as Chris Jericho and Triple H before on the 24th of June 2007, he strapped his wife down, killed her, strangled his son after drugging him, and finally hung himself from a weight machine. A similar scenario to that of Guerrero, however the specifics are about 10 times more gruesome. Some believe that Nancy Benoit's previously divorced husband Kevin Sullivan committed the offence in an act of revenge. I personally am really not sure to this day. And number one, the end of the streak. The feud of Brock Lesnar vs The Undertaker before WrestleMania 30 was, well, definitely not poorly developed, but not the calibre of feud that deserved to be the singular one that resulted in the end of the streak as a whole. After a, well, pretty crap match to be honest that didn't even main event the show, Brock Lesnar got the three count on the dead man at WrestleMania. The world stood still as Brock rolled off of The Undertaker with that grin that I've grown to have the burning desire to punch into oblivion since April 2014. At that moment in time though, no longer was that man in the jacket and black hat The Undertaker, he was securely Mark Calloway.
He stared around in bewilderment as the crowd's applause slowly boiled over into an emotional symphony of chanting and unironic hailing, 20 years in the making. Though he drew the short straw, the phenom left the Superdome that night with his head held high. And to quote Dash and Dawson, he's a really top guy. Anyway, that was my top 10 most shocking WWE moments in history video. Did you like it? Did you not? I'm not too fussed, to be honest, because I'm getting sweet, sweet dollar dollar. Besides this, please do follow me on Twitter, subscribe to me on YouTube, like this video. I don't see this often, so don't take me for a scumbag. Do your research, boys, and I'll see you in the next video that I make. Hopefully you do watch it. Feel free to subscribe. Road to 1K, wubba lubba dub dub, Rick and Morty.